Venus signs. Welcome to your twin flame reading for uh, January 2020. Happy New Year. Uh, but it's also timeless. So whenever you uh, watch it is when you're supposed to watch it. I am your reader, uh, Mark Angela Lyons, Mal for short, president of Drawing the Circle Productions, professional witch, professional intuitive, and damn happy to be reading for you today. Hope you are all doing well. Uh, my brother, sister Virgos, I have four planets in Virgo. <laughs> I am a Virgo sun. Uh, let's see, Jupiter, Uranus, Pluto. Yeah, a lot of the outer planets was born in 68, so a lot of us uh, have those outer, outer planets. Very happy to be a Virgo, born on a full moon. Got a Pisces moon. Uh, so uh, ready to rock and roll for you. Before we get down to business, though, let's get some things out of the way. Number one is, uh, yeah, you hear all the time on YouTube, this is a general read. <laughs> if you want a bit more specific, book me, because <laughs> I do readings all the time, Facebook Messenger, Skype, and over the old-fashioned, not that phone, that phone, right? Not the bat phone, that phone. Uh, so uh, that's why I do Sun, Moon, Rising Suns, Venus, when I'm adding anything, uh, doing, you know, like relationships, the Twin Flame reads, the Soulmate reads, the Path of True Love, etc., right? So please do check your other signs. Take what, resonate, what resonates, leave what doesn't, and you'll know uh, what resonates by how it feels in your body, right? You know, just because it, it may trigger you doesn't necessarily mean uh, that it is uh, not a piece of information for you to consider, just how the intuitive works, right? What's happening in the body while you're listening and watching. Cool, cool. Uh, second of all, my definition of twin flames is a little bit different than what most people are talking about in the general spiritual vernacular, but particularly uh, on YouTube, I notice. Uh, I am working with a redefinition of twin flame and soulmate as described by Matt Kahn, K-A-H-N, spiritual teacher, Hay House author. Really check him out. His YouTube channel is amazing. Matt Kahn, all for F-O-R, love. Check him out. Very inspiring. Just brilliant, brilliant teacher. Um, I'm a spiritual teacher myself, so I pass on shit that works for me. That's just how I roll. He's West Coast. I'm East Coast. Never met him. He had, probably has no idea to exist, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> Yo, witches sharing your shit. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, that's a Virgo for you. Service, service, service. Um, so the definition that we're going with here, uh, twin flames and soulmates are not the same thing. They are different types of soul contracts, nor do you only have one per life. Oh, no, no, no. You have thousands of them throughout your lifetimes. Uh, recurring contracts. Uh, you can be twin flame with a person one life, soulmate the next from what I understand. Um, and the difference is about the, the bottom line for each contract. In a soulmate contract, the, the bottom line is you help each other heal. That's it. You help each other heal, right? Like two mates on a boat rowing, right? Uh, <laughs> the twin flame contract you teach each other how to heal yourselves. In other words, you do not give each other what you want. You give each other what you need. So the love that you're trying to get from your true love, uh, sorry, your twin flame uh, contract is usually the love you have to give to yourself. Same respect, approval, what have you. And then to know that it really does exist outside of only the romantic sexual context, right? For example, I've been saying it for all of these readings, my mother and I soulmate contract, we help each other heal. My father and I, God rest his soul, twin flames, right? He wanted a heterosexual Republican Catholic son. He only got the son part out of me. <laughs> Everything else, not so much. And I wanted, you know, someone who was essentially mentally, emotionally stable for a father, but who got that? <laughs> Picking on the dads, uh, which actually, so so you get that this uh, this reading is about how you can learn what you need to do in the twin flame contract to fulfill the contract at least on your end, like what you have to heal, what you have to look at, and I find that so much more uh, helpful, right? It's because the twin flames in your lives are the ones that are helping prepare you for the soulmate contracts and. Look, I don't just mean the friendship soulmate contracts. Like, all, look at all your exes. They're all twin flames. Tumultuous, uh, uh, transformative for sure, uh, tricky, triggery, right? All those troublesome words, right? They would be very turbulent, right? Uh, all of those exes prepare you 
by teaching you how to love yourself so that you become the mate of your own soul, right? You become the soulmate. And then, of course, then you're ready uh, to meet the intimate, sexual, romantic, so satisfying soulmate partner that you've been working for a lifetime after a lifetime because have we ever had a happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, romantic, sexual relationship that didn't end in horrible tragedy? Right? <laughs> They're not very long lived. We're trying to incarnate that as a foundation, right? Uh, there's evolution for you, right? Got it. Uh, a couple more things. We are going to be doing divine masculine and divine feminine just as a way of differentiating between two different parties in a contract. I was raised by a lawyer. Uh, so uh, keeping that in mind, we are not talking about biological gender, nothing to do with Y chromosomes. I myself consider myself primarily a divine feminine. I'm going to say 60-40. <laughs> Probably that's more like 70 30 uh, uh feminine to masculine plus i am a professional intuitive and i'm gay and i have purple hair and you know all that stuff just sort of adds up <laughs> purple hair has anything to do with gender but you know what i mean it's more yin it's, it's definitely more uh creative than linear uh so take it as it comes right you're gonna have to feel out which one you are though in a twin flame situation because of the twin element there might be a lot of mirroring so take the information how it hits you uh, even uh, when we do the healing mantra cards, we'll get to that, that I'm going to do two of the uh, Matt Kahn healing uh, mantra cards from the healing mantra deck, and you'll be able to use both mantras, both for you to help heal you, healing mantra, as well as to help you heal from whatever the other person is up to or doing. Got it? Cool, cool. All right. So uh, let's see. We did Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine. Oh, all the decks that I read are in the description box below. Uh, please do check out my um, description box because I always have a lot of cool stuff in there. Particularly if you are new to my channel, please like and subscribe because I'm shooting for 1,000 subscribers, at which point I will be able to do super live chat, at which point I'll be able to make a little coin on the side, which is lovely, but then I promised my subscribers I would do Drunk Tarot once a month for the first couple of months, see how it goes. There's a link on what Drunk Tarot is, please check it out. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff down in there, but definitely check out the decks if they interest you because they've given me a great deal of love and a great deal of service over the years. Cool, cool. Please remember to breathe. That is the last one. Please remember to breathe. Keeps you in the present moment so that you can actually hear, right? Instead of reacting, you just <laughs> breathe. You actually can breathe the energy uh, as we go through because I'm doing the same. It slows me down so that I can be really clear translating the chi, the prana, the guidance, the grace into words for you all. And then if you're doing the same, you're tuning yourself to the same frequency that I am while I'm doing it. So I get to just be the external manifestation of the energy that you're already tuning to. And we're all one. Welcome to the quantum field, folks. It's not like there's any other game in town. It is the town. Cool, cool. I guess that's about it. Let's go, my Virgo brothers and sisters. Nice deep breath. Ground and center. Here we go. My collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved, please, one card to represent the divine feminine in this Virgo collective. Sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, twin flame contract for January 2020, though timeless. Please, one for the divine feminine. Face down. While we're here, please, one for the Divine Masculine in this Virgo Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, sign, Twin Flame Contract, January 2020, though timeless, please, one for him, face down. Now, notice I say him and her just to make it easier. Again, not talking bodily gender here. Let's see who we're dealing with, shall we, my brothers and sisters? Oh, very interesting. For the Divine Feminine, we've got the Mother Archetype, which is about as Divine Feminine as you get. There is a Goddess Archetype, but really the Mother, one of the three faces of the Goddess, Maiden, Mother, and Crone. Very interesting. But what's really what makes this so very fascinating is for the Divine Masculine, we've got, this is a fem Feminine Family Archetype, another Feminine Family Archetype, the Damsel. <gasps> The damsel archetype. Um, so, you know, all, all right, people say, well, they're two feminines, it's two chicks, or two lesbians could be two gay men. But everybody's got feminine and masculine energy, so there's something fascinating about the damsel. I, I have both of these archetypes in, in my own personal uh, 
archetypal chart reads Sacred Contracts by Carolyn Mace, who inspired the cards, obviously. Uh, so that's just fascinating. I've never even seen a combo like that. Now, to keep in mind, this need not be a romantic sexual relationship. Uh, mothers and daughters, just saying, I can talk about twin flamey, so need not necessarily be that. And remember, even the twin, the familial twin flame relationships, as you um, learn how to give yourself the love that you can't get there, which is what the contract is about. It's not their fault. They're playing the role they're supposed to play. They can even give that love that you want from them to somebody else drives you up a wall, that's how it's written. It's just how it's written in, in the divine plan of it all. Uh, then anything you learn from any uh, twin flame contract uh, to love yourself, to heal yourself, to set boundaries, to, to therapy, whatever it is, affects not just every relationship in your life, your relationship to yourself, but affects the quantum field, affects the holographic reality of all of life. So every anytime one of us heal, all of us heal, right? So totally worth it. Uh, fascinating. Let's read these. I'm going to uh, read the lead, then the gold, the shadow attribute, and then the light attribute. This is what we all have in here somewhere and to some degree, some less and some more than others, but this is the light that we're shooting for. So for the mother archetype, the shadow smothering or abandoning children, right? So either smothering or abandoning, two extremes. Uh, instilling guilt in children for becoming independent. I wasn't raised with that. My mother was like, be your own person. Well, she got a witch out of the deal. Uh, the light attribute, nurturance, patience, unconditional love, joy in giving birth to life. So birth to life, not just literal children. For example, I am not having children in this life. I have cats, but I did not birth them myself because I think I'd be doing very different videos if that were the case. Uh, Ripley's believe it or not, uh, but that nurturance, patience, unconditional love, right? Very much divine feminine qualities, but particularly associated with the mother archetype. So um, I have the mother archetype lifelong. I am very mothering. It's really funny. People will project their mother issues onto me every now and again, and oddly enough, women will project their mother issues onto me, which is took me a while to catch that. I was like, why are you so angry at me? I'm not your mother. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, past life, schmast life. I'm not your mother in this life, right? Really see how the dynamics can play themselves out because it's archetype. Don't be so literal, right? Let's look at uh, the divine masculine with the damsel archetype. Um, the shadow attribute, waiting for a knight, K-N-I-G-H-T, not like J-Lo, waiting for the knight, uh, K-N-I-G-H-T, to provide for you uh, seduction by romantic illusion. So yeah, maybe, maybe not with that being rescued thing, uh, but who doesn't get seduced by romantic illusions? We all are fed romantic illusions as soon as we can cognize language, right, <laughs> through fairy tales through stories and then let alone what we go through, through uh, movies and romantic comedies and all that sort of stuff too. It's just so woven into our culture. I don't, I mean, unless really you have no access to media, I don't know how you grow up without being touched by it. Uh, so I could feel that going on for anyone, masculine, divine masculine or divine feminine. Uh, so the light that the divine masculine is shooting for, understanding the nature of healthy romance uh, inspires you to rely upon yourself. And that's really what we're looking for here. We're looking for, even in the twin flame relationship, to learn what is healthy romance. I mean, again, what are our models for that, right? I don't think you can divorce it from the spiritual path because it involves the heart. Love is divine power, sacred truth of the heart chakra. Thank you, Caroline Mace. It's her cards. Uh, Anatomy of the Spirit, brilliant book. Sacred truth of the heart chakra. Love is divine power. So this could be mother daughter. This could be any number of different combinations uh, of people, of types uh, in this archetypal structure. Um, but that's why we have other cards to clarify, to maybe give a little bit more form to that vibrational soul power essence. And how we're going to do that is three cards from the Daughters of the Moon Tarot, Fiona Morgan to past, present, and future, the mother archetype, and three cards from the Mythic Tarot, Juliet Sharman Burke, past, present, future for our Divine Masculine Damsel. All right, so please take a deep breath. Let's get a timeline here. Nice deep breath. Always better to exhale first. 
Oh, here we go. Uh, my goddesses, please. Three cards, past, present, future for this. Seems a little redundant to say divine feminine mother archetype. Uh, in this Virgo collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, twin flame contract for January 2020, please. One for the past. Where has she been in this contract? Just making sure there's only one. Please, uh, one for the present. Where is she now in this contract? And please, one for the future. Where is she headed in this conflict uh, contract? The second time I've done that in these readings. Um, just to make mention of it, that third card is always going to be uh, fixable, changeable, not fixed, mutable. That's the word I was looking for. All right, let's, while we're here, let's get the three out for the divine masculine so we can just zoop go right across the table. Breathe. Hmm, oh my gods, my gods, my gods, please. Three cards for the Divine Masculine Damsel Archetype in this Virgo Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, Twin Flame Contracts for January 2020, though timeless. What's going on here with this Divine Masculine Damsel Archetype? Where has he been in this Twin Flame Contract? Where is he now? Oh, there you are in this twin flame contract. Where is he going? There he is in this twin flame contract. Okay. The horses, the horses, the horses, the horses are on the track. So hold on, just getting it a little symmetrical. I am a Virgo. <laughs> Bear with me. All right, let's have a look, see Duxie. What's going on for the divine feminine mother archetype? in this Virgo Twin Flamer. Well, in her recent past, Nine of Pentacles, great card, right? She who's got her own, right? The Lady of the Manor, this is Malama, a Polynesian a goddess of fertility. It is the Nine of Pentacles. So that thing of the uh, of the earthy, right? You think of the, the woman of the manor with the falcon on her arm and the, and the Rider Waite tarot. Full-breasted, uh, full-gored, fed, nurturing, Solitary, right? Good on her own, stable, solid. So really feeling, I mean, that's very, very mother energy there. Uh, the two of them, Malama definitely feels like a mother, not a maiden or crone, at least in this depiction. So uh, to feel that fullness of where she is coming from feels very, very lovely, very solid, very stable, very earth sign too, obviously an earth card pentacle. Where is she now in this contract? <laughs> We have a theme. We've got uh, the Mother of Pentacles, Taurus, the Great Corn Mother. I remember learning about the Great Corn Mother when I was like in kindergarten growing up on Long Island, right? I think it's the Iroquois Indians, right? So really take that in. Take that in that we've got two Earth Mother goddesses going on here. Remember, Earth Mother, right? And, and, and you know, this is Virgo we're talking about. Very, very powerful thing here. Now, look. Whether or not this refers to a Virgo uh, human being or not, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, whoever, maybe, maybe not, don't have to go into that right this moment or at all. But to get that second house energy is about lifelong values, right? Think stable, fertile, fixed earth. What are the things that you value lifelong? Like for me, I keep saying it's honesty. Not the only thing I value, right? Like I value my home, Taurus, fixed good. Not home, Fourth house, house, like my house, but my house and my home are one and the same. Uh, my career, right? It's something long-term for me. What are the things that you value uh, lifelong? Your health, second house stuff. Yes, of course, money, abundance, and prosperity and all that stuff too. But those are things that you value long-term. So this mother archetype, very, very uh, full, very much having that, the, that nine of pentacles, not a ten, not all the way, all the way home, so to speak, in terms of completion of the cycle of earth. But with this great corn mother, a great sense of fertility, a great sense of, sense of depth, a great sense of wealth, and remember wealth is more than money, it could be wealth of time, wealth of patience, Wealth of love, right? Prosperity. If people would get that the word prosperity comes from the Roman name of the goddess Persephone, the Roman name is Proserpina. Proserpina. That's where we get the word prosperity from. You get the fertility of that, right? 
So, uh, just lovely, 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 lovely. Where is she going in this twin flame relationship? Well, she goes from Taurus to its opposite, Scorpio, Hakate. So it feels like things do take an about face, particularly because they are literally opposite signs in uh, the, the belt of the zodiac, if that's not redundant. Zodiac means belt. Um, so into the depths she goes, into the emotional world. Uh, queen of the crossroads, goddess of the crossroads, goddess of witches. Uh, looking at uh, Hakate here, the Scorpio card, other people's resources, money, but also sex, power, you know, a lot, a lot of energy here. So not so sure uh, that if this is, uh, again, another person, very much could be, but then you've got really opposite personalities here in a timeline. Uh, more so, this can very much be about um, life values and money and sex, and really her getting clear on these things in a linear progression in terms of uh, nurturance, patience, unconditional love, joy in giving birth to life. Well, this might be her giving birth to her own life, so to speak, her own finances, her own stability, her own sense of power, and what she values, nurturing that within herself. Let's look at the damsel here, the Divine Masculine damsel. Where has he been? Six of Cups, always that wistful look, particularly because this is a psyche of Eros and psyche, uh, mythic tarot, Greek myth, uh, missing her husband Eros because, well, she drips some oil on him. <laughs> Them's the breaks, girl. Uh, sort of remembering what it was like to be married for the hot second that she was married to the god of love but did not know it, right? Very, very sad story. It ends well. Uh, so that thing of nostalgia, of looking back. So for this damsel might be somebody, yeah, lost in those romantic illusions of how wonderful it was knowing uh, or maybe not knowing that every relationship brings us lessons to help us grow and evolve, hence the path of true love in general, which is just fraught with twin flames and soulmates left, right, and center. Where is this divine <laughs> masculine damsel now? This card's come up a bunch. The Fool. This is Dionysus, who is actually the god who sits in the throne of Virgo for me. Uh, I, I am a predominantly Dionysian archetype, just how I am. <laughs> My hair is purple, the color of wine. Well, really purple wine, uh, considering I really only drink white wine anymore. Uh, this is, of course, the fool jumping off the cliff, taking a leap, a leap of faith, following the divine, following that faith, initiating something in the gap between the card of the world or the universe and the, and, uh, the magician, that magic gap between the worlds, the leap of faith, the new beginning. And people always want to make it like the first card of the tarot. Technically it's not, it's the zero. The zero has no value. It is literally that magical vacuum space in between where anything is possible. It's the fool. Total um, potentiality without form. Uh, and where is he going? The two of wands. So good. Good to, to see going from the fool to the two, uh, but particularly the two of wands, which is often about planning, right? Getting clear on what it is that you want. Now, people will say indecisiveness in terms of the two of uh, blades, and I agree to that to an extent because it's usually about mental analysis, looking at the different sides of things. This is the one is about gathering information to make a decision. So planning, what do I need to bring? Like today, it's pouring rain. I was like, all right, I gotta go here, I gotta go here, I gotta go here, I gotta go here. Like I planned it out in my head so it would be, a f it, it wasn't just what I wanted to do, some of it was, uh, but the majority of it is what I had to do. So that two of, of wands, of that planning stage, no action necessarily being taken. So just looking at the timelines here, needed that. I am seeing a slow unfolding, like even though the fool is ready to jump, the action taken still feels like though he's ready to, still in that contemplation place, not necessarily jumping, and with two court cards in uh, the present and the future, I'm going to go uh, with the other cards that are going to hit the table to define these a little bit more, give them a little bit more shape. Which is why, it's not that I don't enjoy reading court cards, I do, but I really like to stick with, uh, for myself as a reader, as an artist that way, with the zodiacal correlation to each card, so that I can get into the zodiacal uh, flavor of it, whether or not there's a person involved, because every person who comes into our lives 
uh, carries with them certain patterns that if it's shown in a card this way, we can at least reflect on, okay, well, what does that represent within my gestalt, within my, um, my part of the hologram, my part of the dream? Yeah, mystical language. Let's uh, move on. We are going to get two of the new deck, the Healing Mantra deck from Matt Kahn. So excited. I'm calling them my, uh, my lightsabers on cardboard. They just cut through the shit, man. Really digging this deck a lot. And for every reading I've done them in, well, particularly these Twin Flamers, why? Because it's learning how to heal yourself. So, as I said earlier, whether you are the Divine Feminine, the Divine Masculine, the Watcher, the Cross Watcher, you can use both of uh, these mantras suggested. Uh, if you are, for example, the Divine Masculine Damsel, you can use whatever mantra you get here to heal you, that's your stuff, but whatever one comes up for the Divine Feminine Mother, uh, you can then use for yourself to help you heal what's going on uh, with them in your life, or lack thereof. Got it? Here we go. Voices of the Ascended Masters. Nice deep breath. Oh, that was lovely. One more. Ah. Oh. My Ascended Masters, Matt and the Ascended Masters, Matt and the Masters, please. One card for this Divine Feminine Mother Archetype in this Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign, Twin Flame contract for January 2020, though timeless, please. What is a healing mantra for this Divine Feminine to help her heal. I'm not even going to look, just putting it down while we're here. Please, one for the Divine Masculine in this Virgo Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Twin Flame Contract. January 2020, though time less. That was a little clunky. Let's try that again, please. January 2020, Virgo Collective, Divine Masculine, Damsel Archetype. Please, what's a healing archetype for the Divine Masculine? There we go. Now, I'm going to be reading from the book once I get them lightly defined. One side of the card is the name of the mantra, the other side is the mantra itself. Buckle up, folks. Here we go. <laughs> For the Divine Feminine, we've got embodying the soul. That's embodying the soul. I have a right to be excited. I have a right to be excited. That is a great mantra. Now, remember, mantras are not affirmations. Affirmations are statements of truth that you're trying to affirm within yourself to try and get an emotional response. That's not what a mantra does. A mantra is like a code you repeat over and over and over and actually uh, penetrates the conscious mind through the subconscious mind and begins moving into the archetypal world of the unconscious mind, triggering uh, almost like a catalytic experience, right? Like a catalyst uh, in there to unleash certain things, just like a pin code, right? Would unleash your account or whatever, uh, in a computer, don't ask me, I'm not a millennial, I'm Generation X, cocktail, please, waiter. Uh, so I have a right to be excited. I'm going to read this one right now, embodying my soul, embodying my soul, opened right to it. I have a right to be excited. When your soul is embodied, you are grateful to be alive. You are aware of life as a precious opportunity to experience the frequency of your own light through the unique attributes, characteristics, and senses of a person. As your soul becomes embodied, you are elated to be a part of life's cosmic play, no matter how bad things seem. This mantra is ideal for developing courage, finding your inner voice, and feeling safe in your body. And look, oh my goodness gracious, Earth, <laughs> literally Earth, Earth, Divine Mother, like Mother Earth, and then this Scorpio, right? That emotional, deep, you know, money, sex, power, other people's resources, uh, archetypal deal there. So that's, that's pretty heavy duty. Um, uh, I have a right to be excited. So, you know, not I guess chanted mantras. You chant. I have the right to. I have a right to be excited. I have a right to be excited. But let it penetrate into the cell tissue. I have a right. I have a right. I have a right to be excited because you do. You do. Why shouldn't you? It's your path. It, you incarnated. You know, nobody had to be here 
in this world. We chose. We had to have chosen. The thing is, is if you don't remember choosing, because you don't, choose now, right? Say, no, I choose whatever this is. I'm a soul on a journey. I'm here to learn. I must have agreed on some level. They can't, I mean, this isn't prison planet, right? Let's read uh, the Divine Masculine here. And what do we got? Welcoming surrender. Now, considering we've got the jumping of the fool here, I can feel a little uh, correspondence there. Uh, but, but with that idea of the damsel, right, about those uh, illusions, those romantic illusions, but then it's the second part of this one, inspires you to rely on yourself, right? That might be a big, 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 big lesson for this uh, divine masculine thinking perhaps that he can't do certain certain things on their own. Everybody do things on their own. Uh, but then to actually go into the planning stages of that. Again, this need not be romantic sexual. Kind of not feeling that anyway, but to each their own. It's a large collective. So uh, welcoming surrender. There is no problem, only destiny being revealed. I've gotten this one before. There is no problem. There is only destiny being revealed. I don't think you can see that. The, the writing is very light on the cards. I don't think it matters how I turn it to the camera. Certain cards are just brighter than others that way. Uh, so let's have a look. Welcoming Surrender. I think it's prep. Is it the last one? Yes, it is. It is the last one in the little booklet. Welcoming Surrender. There is no problem, only destiny being revealed. When surrender is welcomed, you are open to viewing life as the playground of the soul's evolution. You're no longer worrying about what to do or where to go. <laughs> Instead, you are following the gentle, peaceful flow of inner guidance. In surrender, every personal conflict is handed over to source, so as not to distract from the prime objective of evolving your consciousness with the utmost sincerity, love and compassion for all. Uh, this mantra is ideal for eliminating resistance, dealing with anger, and easing an overthinking mind. Virgo, Virgo, <laughs> Virgo being one, I'm allowed to say that. So uh, that sort of makes sense here, like that surrendering. It's like, okay, I remember when things were we're better, but I, I want to move forward. All right, I surrender my will to the divine. Let's just do this. Let's just jump. And then comes this thing of, well, then I've got choices and options. And what do I want to do? And how does this feel? Not so much feel water, but feel fire. Uh, what is the, the spark? What, what Now what do I want, right? It's like going from the zero to the one to the two. Well, now what do I want? Now I have options. I have to fine tune that. Uh, what we're going to do is get three cards from uh, the Whispers of Love Oracle, which I adore. This one, I usually pull at least one of these a day for myself. Uh, and these are the voices of the higher selves. And because I'm a Virgo, it's my higher self in on this one too. Perhaps not particularly feeling this one, though I can relate to the mother archetype and the damsel archetype. Eh, oh, maybe I'm more this side than that side. That's possible. You know, it can flip. I never even thought of that. Why wouldn't I? I'm always looking for myself in the Divine Feminine. This sort of makes more sense to me, actually. Oh, that would put him on that side. <laughs> I fucking love divination. Okay, here we go. Nice deep breath. <laughs> so easy to fall down a Virgo thought hole. <sighs> Clean slate. The higher selves of all involved, please. One card to represent the Divine Feminine in this Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signed Twin Flame contract for January 2020. Though timeless, please. One card for the Divine Feminine Mother Archetype face down. So make sure I got them face down. I didn't see what it was. While we are here, please. One for the Divine Masculine here in this Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signed Twin Flame contract January 2020. Though timeless. And one more for the contract itself, right? Sort of, I always say it's sort of like the, the third entity, the relationship itself, the contract, because like, even if one person doesn't, couldn't give a rat's ass about, you know, sacred contracts, spiritual twin flame, who gives a shit, right? One of them would be like, yeah, well, there's a contract and I want to read that fucker, right? This gives you, 
gives you insight. I was raised by a lawyer. My mother divorced my father, married a divorced lawyer. Not all scandalous. They're still married. It happened when I was four years old. They just spent the holidays with them. So. Uh, Zeus and Hera. I love them so much. So, higher selves of all involved, please. One card in clarity for this Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign, Twin Flame contract. Timeless, though January 2020 time stamped. Please, one for the contract itself. Whoop. Upside down, please. Okay, did not see what any of them were. Let's see what the Divine Feminine Mother archetypes got. Have faith. Have faith. Trust your faith in this situation. Now, I have a right to be excited, right, that embodying my soul, there's a lot of physical earth energy here, but then the only thing that throws me, oh, is the mystery element of Scorpio, because Scorpio is one of the two mystical water signs. Cancer, yeah, but it's really Pisces and Scorpio. Uh, Cancerians may be moody, but Pisceans have access to uh, the collective unconscious. It's what they represent. Uh, the river sticks, if you will, that crosses over into the underworld. Uh, and Scorpio, the underworld, right? So definitely a mystical thing there. So to have faith. Um, so for the divine uh, feminine mother archetype here, like have faith. And you have a right to be excited. Something about really, like, I'm here to play something out. I'm here to fulfill a role in this contract, whatever this relationship is. Um, and it's and I have a right to be, right? And what it says, I have a right to be excited, to, to anchor fully in the body, right? Like, yeah, we're spirits and bodies, but we came to be in bodies, be in the body, right? The visceral, the physical world. Uh, let's see what the Divine Masculine Damsel has here. Uh, back to what you love. Your current situation is giving you an opportunity to reevaluate what you love. And uh, uh, hence this card of welcoming surrender. Uh, there is no problem, only destiny being revealed to sort of jump in the direction of that again. To really consider, to reevaluate, to reassign value to what it is that you love often means we need to what? Come here. We, we need to kind of Retrospect, we need to look back. Now, this is in the past here. Now is sort of, you could say, the jumping into or in that process of evaluating. Let me really get into this. What is it that I want? And then the deeper, perhaps, soul searching, not just contemplation, which tends to be of the mind. This is more the feeling out of what is it that I really want, intention, the what I want and the why I want it. The contract itself, love who you are. That's the name of this Twin Flame contract, self-love then. Uh, you are a divine and wonderful person deserving all of the wonderful things that life has to offer. So if either side of these can walk away with this, not saying, like, like if this is family, you can't necessarily walk away from people. But chances are this is what each wants to hear from the other or one wants to hear from the other. Uh, you are a divine and wonderful person deserving all the wonderful things that life has to offer. If the other person cannot tell you that because they can't even tell themselves that, which is usually the case, uh, some pain, some unresolved stuff, I don't know, I'm not feeling that on either side here, but particularly with this, this thing, I have a right to be excited and... Uh, uh, there's no problem, only destiny being revealed here, that that maybe this damsel is, is sort of wistful and wanting this approval, but really needs to give it to themselves. Because at the end of the day, when somebody says it, even if it's only words, right, is the energy transmitted there, that is the sort of love, the sort of um, support that only we can give ourselves. Let's have a look at this in overview, shall we? Magic clap. We start with the Divine Feminine, with the Mother Archetype in the shadow, smothering or abandoning children, instilling guilt in children for becoming independent. The light attribute, nurturance, patience, unconditional love, joy in giving birth to life, which would certainly indicate this person is a mother of some kind, whether or not the mother of this Divine Masculine party on, on the other side of the table 
uh, not really sure, can't really tell, but definitely there's a, there's a contract. That's what the reading is for. Recent past for this mother archetype got the Nine of Pentacles, solid, stable, independent, maybe not connected to anybody, maybe single. I mean, that, that card is so oftenly talked about the person being single regardless of gender, right? But then in the present position, the Mother of Pentacles, the Taurus card, the Great Corn Mother, almost an exact replica of the Nine of Pentacles, Malama, although different culture, but still that idea of fertility, Earth, completion, except this time uh, the Great Corn Mother has a baby on her back, right? To move that into the opposite sign of Taurus in the what's coming, right? The future position, Scorpio, Crone of Cups, Hecate, Queen of the Crossroads, Money, Sex, Power, Other People's Resources, and uh, I did not feel this before, but here it is, Decisions, because she is the goddess of the crossroads, Queen of the Crossroads, where, well, at least, right, three roads meet. Usually we think of four roads, crossroads, but that's not how it, it always is, right? The, where three roads meet is usually where... Uh, Hakate is found. Um, so that thing of perhaps a deeper decision ha uh, having to be made here, which would explain that, have faith, uh, trust your faith in this situation, while at the same time affirming, um, yes, I'm using the word affirming with a mantra, I have the right to be excited. There might be something really pulling her forward here, uh, something about embodying her soul, her soul calling her forward to something which would, again, make sense with that Scorpio thing. Why else would she need to have faith in it? She was feeling it, but perhaps not understanding it, needing to be in the body and take some sort of action, particularly if it is giving birth to life, particularly a new one for herself. For the Divine Masculine Damsel here, we've got in the shadow attribute, waiting for a knight, K-N-I-G-H-T, to provide for you seduction by romantic illusions. And again, I know so few, so few people who would ever admit to being seduced by romantic illusions, and yet we were all exposed to them. Like the common cold, uh, the light attributes, understanding the nature of healthy romance inspires you to rely on yourself. And that, understanding the nature of healthy romance, just you have to do it a bunch of times. You have to really be willing to learn, to heal, to grow, which is really what twin flame contracts are about. For the uh, divine masculine damsel, who of course wants to take action of some kind, being <coughs> the divine masculine, Masculine, starting off with the Six of Cups in the past, that there's been some deeper contemplation, some reflection, some wistfulness, some nostalgia, perhaps some emotional exploration of feelings moved then into the present moment of the Fool, that definitely uh, the Divine Masculine wants to take action, is ready to, or is in process of uh, jumping off the cliff, taking a risk, moved by whatever was felt in that Six of Cups moment but then stepping into the Two of Wands. So it's not a huge plunge so much as it is the Fool then moving into this Two of Wands, planning it. So uh, wouldn't surprise me that this could be a Virgo, someone who's really balancing themselves out, thinking about it, but more importantly, feeling out, evaluating which of these things do I want more, not just the what do I want, but why do I want it. The mantra, there's no problem, only destiny being revealed. So a certain sense of surrender, saying, okay, like, all right, there's no problem. I'm being asked to jump off a cliff. I'm being asked to take a leap of faith. Uh, only destiny is being revealed here. But somehow that leap is uh, back to what you love. Your current situation is giving you an opportunity to reevaluate what you want, and that certainly plays itself out with the card of uh, really the Six of Cups, the nostalgia in the past, the the fool initiating, right, jumping off the cliff, the leap of faith into the Two of Wands, essentially a reevaluation, right? Which, what do I want, and why do I want it? Uh, with the overarching uh, card here, the Whisper of Love for the con, uh, the I keep saying the conflict. Because I know, because twin flames are usually so conflicting, um, but the contract, love who you are. You are a divine and wonderful person, deserving all of the wonderful things that life has to offer. And if this is really two lovers part, parting ways or taking uh, time apart in a twin flame uh, contract, to be able to say that to each other. You are a divine and wonderful person deserving all of the wonderful things that life has to offer. If it's truly meant 
that's really how soulmates part ways. Uh, but it would uh, maybe that there is a possibility. Maybe that is how you um, fulfill a twin flame uh, contract romantically, or even if it is the parting of ways of friends or even family members. You're a divine and wonderful person, deserving all of the wonderful things that life has to offer. I want that for you, but I also want that for myself. So that is definitely part of a twin flame contract of of saying that to yourself. The more you are able to say that to yourself, and with time really mean it. It certainly is easier to say and mean for other people because love is the thing that the more you give it away, the more you have, but the more you give it to yourself, the more you can feel it authentically for others. Well, Virgos, that was a mouthful and that was very powerful. Um, may the Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs be blessed in all of their twin flame contracts that we may all heal, grow, become the best that we can be, fulfill our roles in the divine plan and help heal this world from the energetic grids of the quantum fields of our own love outwards into the world. May we all be so blessed and so it is. Thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year. Please do like and subscribe. Wishing you the very best and the very blessed of 2020. But for now, my darlings, hail, farewell, and blessed be.